Bill Weiss, host of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. My guest today is Dr. Chan He Lee. He's an associate professor of uh, animal science, specifically dairy cattle nutrition at at The Ohio State University. Uh, He's a former colleague of me. I've got to work with him quite a bit before my retirement. And he has a a pretty broad and active uh, research program in applied dairy cattle nutrition. Uh, Today, we're going to talk about a recent experiment he did looking at Energen corn. Uh, Dr. Lee, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, uh, Bill. Um, Thank you for the invitation. Um, Today, I'm uh, invited uh, to talk about two different, uh, one, uh, first one uh, is uh, Energen corn. Of uh, uh, feeding energy and corn for lactating dairy cows. Why don't you start with a really brief description of energy and corn? What what makes it special? So energy and corn is uh, is it's not a very new but pretty uh, recent uh, development uh, for corn. Uh, it has a trait uh, that produces more uh, contains more alpha amylase. Uh, as we know, uh, all the we always try to improve. Uh, corn starch digestibility in the rumen for uh, dairy cattle. And if uh, we, we sometimes we provide uh, uh, the, some enzymes to in- increase the starch digestibility uh, in dairy cows, but uh, we, this corn uh, was developed to uh, genetically include enzymes, uh, alpha amylase. Uh, so it, it has more uh, activity, enzyme activity when it was consumed uh, in the Roman, uh, that was the idea. And uh, the hypothesis for the annual research is to increase the starch digestibility uh, in the Roman uh, when uh, that corn is consumed uh, for their in dairy cows. What, um, a big picture, but what, what treatments did you use here in, in, in this experiment? In uh, our experiment, we tried to, so basically in dairy cow nutrition, research, there are only three papers available so far. So one from us, one from Michigan State, one from uh, uh, Penn State. Um, the results are quite different, but the uh, common hypothesis uh, of those tr- uh, experiment was to increase the starch digestibility and increase the, the milk protein uh, milk protein yield and milk yield uh, in lactating dairy cows. And, and the treatments were, again, briefly on the treatments you used in your experiment? So in our experiment, we had three treatment. Control was the, the traditional corn silage and traditional corn grain. And the second treatment was the uh, diet containing energy and corn silage. And third treatment was to was uh, uh, energy and corn silage and energy and corn grain. So you could you could compare the but the effects of the the added enzyme to co- corn grain and yep. corn silage, and then is there any synergy between the two? Yeah, we wanted to look at the effect of corn silage and also effect of corn grain separately. Mm-hmm. With corn silage, you know, starch digestibility is a function of maturity. How long it's been in the silo? So, what? How how mature was this corn silage corn when you chopped it, or the dry matter of the silage when you chopped it? If you can remember. So we uh, actually uh, the period of silage and enshelling uh, was about uh, uh, four weeks, okay. a little more than four weeks, and then we started the experiment. That uh, silo was uh, actually prepared for specifically for this experiment. So we prepared the uh, uh, silage and then. Uh, the minimum period of time of ensiling, and then we opened it. We started the experiment right away. So, for pretty, it was pretty fresh corn silage, which you'd expect. This would be a time when the enzymes would be really beneficial yep. compared to stuff that's been in the silo for six months. Yep. And then it was about thirty percent dry matter, so it wasn't real mature. It wasn't real immature, but uh, oh. a little bit more on the immature than mature side. Um, why don't we get into results? And again, I don't need all the numbers, but basically on production, what, what did you find on treatment effects? So in our experiment, uh, corn, energy and corn silage increased the dry matter intake and also increased the milk yield. The silage, the, just to, it was the silage, but not the, silage. okay, okay, silage. thanks. But uh, also uh, corn, energy and corn silage increased uh, microprotein synthesis. 
we did uh, use the technique to measure the my uh, Roman microbial protein synthesis. And we realized that the microbial protein synthesis was increased for co energy and corn silage. But if we look at the energy and corn grain, uh, we didn't see any effect. Okay. So corn silage had a positive effect, but corn grain didn't have a positive effect. That was pretty uh, similar uh, to the control group uh, treatment. So do you did I don't know if you, I can't remember. Did you measure ruminal starch digestibility yeah. in these treatments? We, we measured uh, ruminal starch digestibility. This was the Latin scale design uh, with the cannulated cows. So we measured the uh, uh, nutrient flow and nu uh, rumen uh, nutrient digestibility, including starch. And so, did you with more microbial protein? Was that caused by more digestibility in in the rumen, or for other other reasons? Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't see the difference in starch digestibility in the rumen and starch digestibility uh, uh, from the total collect total uh, tract digestibility. So we didn't see the uh, difference in uh, starch digestibility, but we uh, observed the increased uh, uh, microprotein synthesis. We have a hypothesis that has to be uh, confirmed with the uh, probably more uh, studies. Mm -hmm. um, but starch digestibility was not the factor for the increased microbial protein synthesis. Uh, in, in the paper, since you found tended to find more differences with the antigen corn silage than antigen corn grain, but in the paper you mentioned that the particle size of the grain was finer for the conventional corn than for the antigen corn, even though it was processed through the same hammer mill. Um, antigen corn grain uh, was more coarse. Yeah. Uh, then uh, control uh, corn grain. So uh, we had a feed mill uh, at the, our university, and all the corn grains were processed equally. Um, but when we uh, measured the uh, particle sizes, it was different. Uh, it was quite different. Um, so I don't know if uh, uh, this corn with the uh, our farm age uh, trait uh, had a different uh, property. Uh, so it has a different uh, particle size when it was processed, but we are not sure. At a sale, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M. Visit MilkPay.com to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids. And to learn how Smart Amine M is the product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, component levels, and the lifetime performance of their herds. So this might be if this if you're using the corn grain, you might have to process it finer, or yeah. set the grinder wheels or the the however you're processing this. You might if this is a genetic trait, you might have to process it more to to see the advantage in compared to conventional corn. However, um, uh, we there are quite a bit of beef cattle studies. Uh, they they tested the corn grain a lot, different process to corn grain, uh, and uh, Corn grains, but different uh, the trait, uh, energy and uh, conventional versus conventional. But the, the results are quite valuable. So I don't know if particle size was the only factor. Okay. Well, it sounds like we, we still have some stuff to learn on this. So I want to thank you for your time. This has been interesting. Thank you very much for the invitation. <laughs>